Have you ever painted a room in your house a color that you know you don't like, but you did it anyway? and then you left it for years? Well, that's what happened in my kid's bedroom. Welcome to my kid's bedroom. Today, we are gonna be making over this room, getting rid of these dark green walls that just leaves this room feeling like a cave, and we're gonna do white, but we're gonna do a black accent wall by my kid's request. And I found these two headboards from the thrift store, and they match. How rare is it to find anything at the thrift store that matches? So we're gonna be building beds today for the kids. So today's video is being sponsored by Capital One Shopping. We're gonna save some money while we're shopping for things for the room, but really, we just need to get this room looking like it's a room for a almost 12 and a nine year old, almost 10, yeah. They need a better room. This is just crazy. So today we're gonna to do that. Let's jump into it right now. So the two biggest things, paint, and beds and these kids have been sleeping on a king size mattress for the last couple of years and they needed their own space so i knew that i was going to be dividing them up but i also knew that i was going to need some bedding so i teamed up with capital one shopping for some of the things that i knew that i'd be buying for this room online with capital one shopping what it does is it helps you to save money by automatically applying coupon codes i don't know about you but when i shop online i'm always searching for codes well with this app this browser extension, you download it for free and it's actually part of your Chrome extension. So as you are just shopping online like normal, it will pop up and show you if there are coupon codes and it'll search and it'll automatically apply them to your account. So when you get started, you just download it for free pick a few of your favorite stores. And I was really interested in going to find some bedding. So I went to Macy's and was able to get 4% back and found this Kenneth Cole. Oh my gosh, this is like flannel, menswear, perfect for a boy's room. So I was able to get that, but I was also able to get some pictures for the kids' room. I wanted to personalize it, and when I went to check out, you see that the little pop-up says, hey, we found an offer and we're gonna give you some money back. So you not only save money with coupon codes, but you can actually get a percentage of your total amount spent back at checkout. So you can't really beat that. And what I found is that even as it was checking coupon codes for the things I was buying online for the room, it surprisingly popped up for things like pizza and for other stores that I didn't even realize there was percentages and coupon codes for. So be sure to download it at CapitalOneShopping.com to save yourself money online as well. Okay, let's jump back into the room makeover. The first part was just dismantling everything. The kids had an old bed that was still there, like a loft bed. They didn't even really use that bed. They slept on the mattress. So this needed to go, the bookshelf, everything. And one thing I'll point out to you, before you get started on a room makeover, before you paint, be sure that you clean the walls. You can see here that there's a lot of dust on my kids' walls, things that I didn't even realize were so messy. <laughs> but if you see that dust, I mean, not only is it not healthy to, to breathe in, but trying to paint over that is not good. So definitely clean your walls with a little bit of either vinegar and water, or you can use some simple green and make sure that you take care of all the holes in the wall. Now, my youngest son loves to play basketball and I had a little basketball hoop hanging up there. Well, of course, what child isn't going to try to dunk? That didn't work too well. And of course it fell down. So you wanna sand or smooth those holes and then take a little bit of joint compound or you can use dry decks and you'll need to fill those my kids tend to slam the door and there was not a door stop. So if you have a hole like this, fill it with a little bit of newspaper or you can even use some paper bag just to create a little bit of a stop there so that the putty doesn't go all the way through or the joint compound doesn't fall through the hole. It just gives it a little bit more security. Wear a desk mask sand everything smooth, and then it's time to paint. Now, if you're painting over dark walls, you're gonna have to prime. And because I'd never painted a dark wall before, <laughs> this is something that I did not wanna do because it does add an extra step, but I highly recommend it because otherwise you're gonna have a lot of bleeding through of that old dark paint. So I did, did I do two coats? I think I did two coats of primer just to make sure everything was really covered and then I covered it with two coats of white. Now the hard part of this room makeover was painting over this section of the kids wall that I'd been marking since, gosh, probably nine years since we lived in this house actually. And you can see the paint on my face as I'm rolling over this because you know, it was just painful to do. However, I will tell you 
that I did write down all the kids stats on a piece of paper and we will transfer them to something else. But yeah, I keep track of my kids heights and weights. Anyway, the next part was to do the black accent wall. This part I was trying to freehand and you can do that if you're using like an angled brush. I love brushes that allow you to get right up into that corner and it was fine for the vertical corner but when I got to the top near the ceiling I just thought that it was going to create a larger mess. So you see here that I did actually tape off. You don't have to but you just want to make sure that you can move quickly without having to you know watch your hand so much. All right so once everything was cut in around the window around the corners it was time to paint and I was actually loving this black. I was surprised. I didn't think I would love it because I typically don't like dark colors, but with the light coming in and hitting the white walls, it actually didn't feel like I was darkening the room. It still felt light and airy. Well, I don't know about light and airy, but it felt lighter than just having four green walls. Once the painting was done, it was time to work on the headboards. These are vintage Henrodon headboards that I picked up from the thrift store for probably about $10, $15 each. Super amazing deal. And I was building bed frames for this room. And I had to use SketchUp in order to figure out how to do this. I had to make a footboard, had to figure out how I was going to attach this to the vintage headboards. And my biggest fear is that it would fall apart while my kids are sleeping on it or jumping on it. So a little bit of time went into preparing to make sure I knew exactly what was going to be done to turn these into beds. So I knew that painting them was out of the question. These were too nice to be painted. I did clean them up really good with some simple green and then decided to use some 400 grit sandpaper just to rough it up a little bit, clean off all the excess dust. And then I did two coats of the Java gel stain. Now, typically you're not going to go over an existing stain with a new stain, but Java gel tends to work very well in that manner where you can go over it and it'll just change the appearance a little, give it some shine, give it some depth, but then you don't have to do a full stripping. I went through one coat, let that dry for a little while, and then came back over it with another coat. For me, this was the easiest way to darken it up a little bit, but then try to keep the integrity of the piece as is without having to strip it and remove some of the original charm that was already a part of the piece. And I absolutely love Rub and Buff. This is a metallic wax that I use all the time. It works really well when you are putting it on knobs, handles, where it can be kind of tarnished. So I wanted to clean up these campaign corners here of these headboards. And of course, I didn't want to spray paint them or anything. I didn't even really want to remove them. I just went over it very, very gently with a gloved finger because it will stain your finger. Just clean those up a little bit. I also used two coats of a dark wood polish. I later ended up wiping off the excess oil and I applied two coats of clear wax. So whatever works for you in order to make this shine and look refreshed and renewed. So the next part was actually figuring out how to build the bed frame. Remember these headboards didn't have any footboards, slats, side rails. I mean, I had to build everything. So I went to my local woodworking store. They recommended that I use poplar because it's a solid wood that's not too expensive and that they would be able to plane it for me to get a nice, straight, even board, which you may not get if you're using just a piece of pine that you get from the big box stores. The planed wood was very sharp, so I had to sand that down so I didn't cut myself. And then I needed to make the footboard. Now remember, the footboard needed to sort of match the headboard, so I did a leg that was about two and three eighths inches thick so that it could match the headboard. And this is why I tell everyone, get a track saw. You can make some really simple, smooth cuts very easily, very safely, just by using a track saw. Best investment I've ever made when it comes to tools. So after having those pieces, and I also did cut some other pieces for the footboards, which you'll see in a moment. I sanded everything smooth because I was going to finish them. And whenever you're finishing wood, you should definitely do some, some sanding just to smooth everything out. So these are all the pieces of wood that I used. Well, just a fraction of them. <laughs> now, here's the thing. I always recommend to use a pre-conditioner. This is so when you go to stain your wood, you get a nice, even finish. Otherwise, it could look blotchy. So add that on there, wipe it off after a few minutes, let it dry, and then you can apply your stain. So these are the footboard pieces that I did. 
and these are the legs for the footboard. You'll notice on one side of the footboard leg, I didn't put any stain. That's because when you're gluing things together, you never want to glue up something that has stain on it because the glue is not going to function properly. It can't adhere to the bare wood. So I actually cleaned up the legs just a little bit where the glue was going to go. And then it was time to put everything together for these footboards. You'll notice for the footboard, I have a leg on the left and a leg on the right, and then I've got a centerpiece. And it's gonna be a little offset because the boards are different thicknesses. So I'm gonna be using a domino to connect them. Most people are not gonna have this in their workshop because it's a little bit more expensive, but I will tell you that you can use either a biscuit joiner, and that's much more affordable, or you can use a really inexpensive tool called a pocket hole jig. And I'll leave links down below for all these things. But you wanna think about how you're gonna join things together. And are you going to be able to see that joinery or are you gonna have it be invisible? I like the way that I'm doing it here because it's invisible, but you can also do it with a biscuit cutter and that will also help join your wood together and you won't see any of those you know, little joinery pieces. And the more furniture that I build, there's a few things that I'm realizing are very important. So how you put your wood together, how you're joining it is very important. Your wood glue is super important. You have to make sure that you've got sufficient amounts of wood glue. So don't, don't skimp on it. And also you need a way to clamp your wood after you glue it. A lot of times that joint is not very secure after you glue it together. So if you've got some clamps, those will pull it together and let it dry completely before you take those clamps off. I learned from my last project, always have at least two or three sets of big clamps for big projects. Okay, the next part was to cut and glue the bed slat supports. These beds are not using box springs, so I needed to make sure that the slats that we're gonna be setting on this support was going to be supporting my, my kids. You know, of course, kids want to jump and wrestle and do all those things. So I added a sufficient amount of glue and glued this, and I think it was about one and a half by one and a half to the inside of the bed rails. Now for these beds to be successful and not rock back and forth or break down, I needed to make sure that the brackets were in the exact location for all the bed rails. Remember, there were four bed rails, two beds, you know, and I had to make sure that I was consistent for each side. So you'll see that I've got some markings here on the end, the ends of the boards, and that was my guide for making sure that these were in the exact location. So I measured up nine and a half inches on the headboard legs and the footboard legs, and that's where I was going to place the other piece of the brackets. And because I wanted to make sure this didn't shift around, you know when you're screwing something in sometimes and it just shifts around or maybe you're you know, you're not drilling properly. Well, I wanted to make sure that didn't happen. So these pieces of wood allowed me to put the bracket in the exact location, butt it up against there, and because they were clamped in place, there was very little movement. And you'll notice that these brackets are right on the edge of these narrow headboard legs. The reason why it's so narrow is because I guess that's just how furniture was made. But now if I were to make this from scratch, I likely would have made those legs much thicker with a thicker, hardier wood. And so here I'm just sort of at the mercy of this existing piece of furniture and I'm just making it work. So these brackets were butted up right to the edge of that headboard leg, which was gonna give me just enough room to make sure that that bed rail was flush to the outer edge of both the headboard and the footboard. The bedside rails and also the footboards, everything was sanded down and given a second coat of stain. And then also I added two coats of top coat. So once everything was in place, it was time to assemble this. And this is where it kind of got a little scary. Was this gonna work? I needed these to be flush and I was super excited that the pieces were just thick enough to sit flush with the headboard and the footboard. So the thing is, once you connect it, you just have to make sure that you use a screwdriver and just make sure it's super tight. This is gonna help to prevent the bed from being wobbly. Now about six months ago, I actually got a new bed, but I kept the old slats that came from my old Ikea bed. 
And sure enough, they came in handy. I only cut maybe about half an inch off and was able to use them for the kids' beds. And I also created spacers and glued those in place so that the slats wouldn't move around and shake. So for this, definitely use pine. It is sturdy. Don't use plywood because I found that the plywood doesn't work very well for slats. It has a little bit too much bendability. Next up, it was time to put the mattresses on the beds. These were provided by a company. I will do a review on those in a video coming up very soon. But I knew when I was planning these beds that the mattress would be a little bit too wide. But because it's foam, I figured it would just shove down in there. And it did. But this is because the headboards were very narrow. And if I had those bed rails flush, the mattress would need to be tucked in. So I'll cover that in an upcoming video. The next thing was to create some personalization for this room. I love doing names and signs in this beautiful, gorgeous font. And I decided to leave it natural because I wanted that wood tone to show through because it just looks amazing and has sort of a yellowish tone that I thought would match very nicely with the black. I also painted the bedside tables from our bedroom in this gorgeous yellow and we had given them to the kids a few months ago. So this is what the room looked like before. As you can tell, there was no personality. It was not clean. Now it looks fantastic. The kids have their own designated space and people have said, Serena, this looks like an upscale dorm room. And I have to agree with them. I love this room and it just, I think it's gonna work for my kids much better than before. So let's talk cost. How much did this room cost? Well, it was about 700 to 750 for my estimates. And the reason why I think it was a little bit more expensive is because remember, the price of materials have gone up so drastically in the last year, year and a half. And so the cost of the wood was a little bit more expensive. But remember, we saved a little bit of money buying the bedding from Macy's using the Capital One shopping app. We did buy new sheets and I tried to reuse what I could in the room to save money. But if you want a breakdown of everything that I used for this room, you can find it in the blog post down below and all of those materials and links will be included. Now here's one area of the room that I'm not sure I like. I decided to get a sample pot of paint and I did Ohenny's dresser in blue. Now this dresser I picked up $25 years ago when we moved into this house and he's been using the same thrifted dresser. Well, I decided a nice coat of blue would go nice with the yellow, but I don't know if I really like that. So we may be changing that in the future, but everything else in the room I think is amazing. And this morning when I walked into the kids' room, Ohene was sound asleep, hugging his pillow, and he looked so cute. And it just made me so happy to be able to put together a room for them that they felt comfortable enough to just sleep in and just enjoy being in that bed. And he doesn't know that I'm including this. So <laughs> it'll be our little secret. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. This video was sponsored by Capital One Shopping. You can go to CapitalOneShopping.com to download the extension to save you money in your room. And I will see you next project, next video.